So good evening, everybody. This is a new human experience podcast. And tonight is July 24th, 2020. The topic for this evening is romantic relationships. So all of July, I've been talking about um, really basically relationships. And last week, I started talking about family relationships. And so tonight's topic is more on romantic relationships. So romantic relationships is kind of like family, but it is really um, family that you choose yourself. Even though not all romantic partners become family, however, because of the nature, the, the, the more intimate nature of romantic relationships, that they do tend to create a level of intimacy that approximate family. So that's why, um, even though it's kind of like family, but I, because it's a special kind of family, so I just want to devote this week's podcast on this romantic relations. So romantic romance, I would say, just all, all about romance is really a fairly modern concept because a lot of the um, traditional, I would say, marriages or, or um, coupling of uh, people don't necessarily rely on or was, is not initially romantic. It's not based on romance. A lot of the older cultures and even, even nowadays, um, there are still arranged marriages, whether it is for financial reasons, political reasons, or for any other reasons. The, the, um, I just want to point out that romance and romantic relationships is a fairly recent concept in terms of the, 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 the history of human beings coming together, procreating and all that. A lot of the times, or I would say most of the times, romance, um, it's really not the, 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 the initial reason why people come together. And um, so in 3D, uh, inverted 3D and 2D, we were encouraged to find the one true love, that our twin flame, the, like the soulmate and all of that. All of that um, idea is about romanticism. And if you look at the, um, uh, I would say literature, there are lots of things about or, or glorifying romance and also about um, talking about unrequited romance relationship as well. I recently saw a video on, um, or I would say a, a, a snippet of um, a video on Wuthering Heights. Really, I remember when I was in high school, I read that story. So it's, it's about, it's really about romantic love. Well, very, um, I would say, crazy and, and, and um, obsessive kind of romantic love. And, and really romance so far has a little bit of that in it. It's because in 2D and also in inverted 3D, we um, human beings are really exploring drama. We like to really feel drama, whether it is in life or it, whether it is in um, relationships, in romantic life and family life. Um, drama, I would say, ups and downs. Um, drama in terms of ups and downs and going through trials and going through hardship. That seems to be the hallmark of the, the inverted matrix. And so that's why I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with, with drama because drama really gave us a very interesting ride. Let's put it that way. It's, it really let us explore the, the rich sensorial experience of what romantic love can offer us and, and really how to, it's, it's like when you, um, when you're in the throes of a romantic relationship, you feel so, it, like initially anyways, you feel so um, alive when you're with the, the person that you love because you know, not only did you um, find someone you like, but that person actually 
has the same feelings and return to your, your feelings. So that's why um, there is this, 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 the physical sensation of being in the throes of, especially in the beginning of the, the honeymoon period of romantic love. It's really so very um, different, intoxicating. And that's why it's quite addictive in a way. And we, and a lot of people actually uh, are more, um, I would say, in love with the idea of love rather than really trying to connect to the other person. And just to step back a little bit is to, to kind of look at, you know, why that is the case, why that is the case, this, this um, different, this really um, passionate and also obsessive feeling about romantic love is if you look at it, the root of romance is really about seeking wholeness. It's always about finding that one person that is going to complete ourselves. So in a way, um, it's really symbolic of our, our internals, um, unconscious maybe, or not so unconscious, is this, this drive to seek someone else, to seek wholeness to seek balance. So it is part of the journey of um, our consciousness seeking growth. And it is a necessary step, even, uh, and even though it may be sometimes causing us to experience a lot of ups and downs, however, it is part of the, the journey of our conscious of our consciousness growing is we need to go through this yo-yoing effect of, of um, experiencing all the, the ups and downs until we um, like re we repeat the pattern enough so that we get to the point where we get it. And um, also, I also want to um, share that I would say when I was younger or when I first started to look into consciousness, one of the, um, my, I would say, person that I really admired is Kao Jung, who is a um, psych psychologist or a psychiatrist. And he um, is fairly well known for his use of analyzing dreams in order to um, help his clients to understand their own um, internal turmoil and how to seek, um, how to find a solution for what's going on inside. And, and so one of his really important book is, is um, it's really talking about after he has analyzed dreams, like thousands and thousands of dreams over decades of his um, really successful career, he kind of can sum up that um, the, that in dreams, he has kind of noticed that in dreams, when a man dream of a woman, this female figure actually represents the unknown in the men's, um, in the men's own psyche. And the same goes for when a male figure appears in a woman's dream. Because for women, a man um, and how men thinks is really not familiar, it's unknown. So when we have our, when we are dreaming, you should, a lot of the times our dream is very in symbolic. So when we actually see a, for a woman, if we see a man, it's really that unconscious, um, I would say, journey to, to try to work out something in our own psyche that is unknown yet, that uh, our unconscious mind has not quite um, gotten familiar with yet. And so the opposite gender is really symbolic. And if you look at romantic relationships, it is really very symbolic in that the uh, a man and a woman coming together, it's really about um, 
trying to seek that balance, that completing that part of ourselves. However, it's more of an external way, in a, a very physical way to try to complete that. And as we move more into fifth dimension or um, try to grow our consciousness, one of the, the things that is um, that we start to understand is that the, the way of um, projecting all of our longing to seek completeness in order to seek wholeness is really if we project all of that onto someone else, our partner, it's, it's a lot for, to, um, I would say, it's a heavy burden for someone else outside of ourselves to take on that. And a lot of the times, unless that person is very um, mature and really has worked on, on understanding themselves and how their, their mind works and also understand and take an effort in understanding how the female um, psyche uh, works is that it's too much burden to place on someone else because when you're trying to complete yourself and you project all of your your power and also all of your um, ability to have or, or your um, ability to be happy on someone else um, it's, it's a heavy burden for someone to be responsible for your happiness. So that's why now the, the, the divorce rates or um, it's really not good. Um, one in every, or, or at least, you know, two or three, maybe 50%, um, give or take, of marriages really does not end well. And even for those people who manage to stay together the, it is um, a lot of times a not an easy job. So a lot of that is because we try to seek that completeness and we try to seek that outside of ourselves. And if we um, and if we want to improve on and try to take the romantic relationships into fifth dimension, um, I'm not saying that in fifth dimension, there is no romance, nothing like that. It's, it's actually um, very much the opposite, is that there is, it's real love. It's not just romance in, in it's not just the, the gestures. It's not just the, the ambience um, in order to create that romantic look or feel. It's actually when we cross this over to fifth dimension to explore um, partnership or, or I would say more intimate partnership, it's really about, and it's always a, a direction to not just seek that wholeness outside of ourselves. It's a parallel process where we seek that balance of male of feminine and masculinity within ourselves and also be open to um, allowing someone else who may be very different from our own makeup to be able to come in and share a intimacy and also to share um, our part of our life journey it may not be like the in the old days where when you get married is forever and all of that that um that believe that you know whatever god put together um no man shall shall uh, pull apart it's um that is really a it's a different kind of mentality and when you when you use romantic relationships, when you, when you consciously um, switch that, that, that gear around is that, is to look at your romantic partner, your, to be somebody who is really someone who, um, that you can be vulnerable with 
without being weak. There's a diff big difference between being vulnerable and, and being weak. Being vulnerable is really um, about being able to bear your soul to let that person in to really see you the way that you want to be seen and the way that you want to be known yourself. And when you open up to, to that, then it actually takes, it actually um, increases the potential for love, for true love, for real love, not just the, um, I would say the look good, feel good. Everybody looks beautiful and they're young and, and, and they have, and, and all of that. It's, it's not the Hollywood kind of romance. It's actually um, real life, being able to accept the other persons with all the flaws, with all the flaws all the imperfections and be able to accept the imperfections as well. So what are the, the I would say, the best frame of mind or mindset in order to expand our capacity for romantic relationships and make that even more, um, no matter in which dimension we are in, whether 3D or 5D that you, you want to go in. I have a few suggestions. And um, so first one is really the, the first and most important is step, I would say, is really to get to know yourself. Um, it's, it's, it seems oxymoron to, to get to know yourself. Of course I know myself, you know, but no, really. It's, we know the, the human part of ourselves. However, um, we still have yet to explore the, the spiritual side and the divine part of ourselves. And to just know the, the our physical body, the, the human side, and to not take into consideration the whole part of you, it's it's um it's really making it hard to get to a i would say a more stable romantic relationship because when you when you relate to someone else whether it's romantic relationships or whether it is just like regular friendship or 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 sim or just mm, relationships with your um, family with your other people in your in the family dynamics it is you're never just relating to them at a physical level even though you may only focus on the physical level there's always that spiritual element to it that is in the background where most of us are more unconscious of so my first suggestion is really explore explore who you are explore all of yourself your spiritual nature your your um human nature all of that um the whole nine yards get to know who you truly are as a spirit and as a a body as as matter because all of that is all part of you, this creation is all part of your life. Your life is your creation. Your body is part of your creation. Your spirit is part of your creation as well. So get to know yourself. Get to really know what feeds you at a physical level and what feeds you at a spiritual level. And when you know both of that and be able to connect with someone who also um, is matches what all parts of you really need, then that, that partnership will be um, much more deep and, um, and, and a much deeper and closer kind of pairing than just to um, just go on either the spiritual or the physical side. We are both. So get to know both of sides of you and what both sides or all sides of you really need in a partner. 
So after you know more of all parts of you is the second um, suggestion is really give yourself the permission to be who you are. Um, a lot of the times, um, perhaps it's just me, but I find that when I am with someone else, I tend to um, to kind of cater to their expectation or cater to what they want, rather than be who I um, be who I am uh, and be comfortable to ask for the things that I need for my own comfort for my own growth so for me that is um what i see that i need so perhaps some of you are better at this than i am so maybe this will not be as important to you however to i would say a lot of possibly to a lot of um more feminine person is because um femininity is more about um, nurturing others rather than than um, looking out for ourselves is to find that balance within yourself to be able to give yourself permission to be who you are to ask for things that nurture you and to really not just ask for for other people but to give yourself that permission to provide for yourself whatever it is that you need and to nurture yourself as much as you nurture other people so that is my second suggestion and the third suggestion is to be comfortable to be vulnerable as i mentioned a little earlier is that it being vulnerable does not mean being weak. To be vulnerable is to really um, let other people see you as who you are and not try to hide or not try to um, be someone else. So to so be comfortable, to be vulnerable, and also um, is to a lot of times being vulnerable, we, we feel vulnerable, it's because we're not sure whether um, being who we are, other people will accept us by being, if we are, um, I would say, standing up and really looking out for our own interests. However, when you, when you turn that around and really give yourself the permission to just be okay with who you are whether you don't have to be perfect you don't have to be anything you are who you are right here right now and be comfortable with allowing that version of you that true version of you to be the the, the version that other people get to know to get to see that that is really um, that's really what invites intimacy because people would they either respond to it whether they either they like you or they don't like you and either way is fine because it's you're not being someone else in order to um, get get the acceptance you there will always be someone who will like you for who you are and there will always be someone who don't like you because you know it's it's not their cup of tea and and that's okay you don't have to be every um one else cup of tea you just have to um put yourself out there and be comfortable with being vulnerable and start to um find the people that resonate with you that that think that you are cool and like you just the way you are and the people that don't like you then they will go and uh, hang out with someone else and that's perfectly okay and then the next suggestion is really um after you know yourself and after you really give yourself permission to be who you are then 
then get to know what kind of relationship would truly nurture you and help you to feel um, comfortable, to be vulnerable. So what do you need? Really um, find out, really um, experiment, try things out and, and really um, get to know what it is that you want. And when you know what you want, then it's actually much easier for you to ask the universe to give you what you want. And then the last suggestion is to really, um, because it is about romantic relationships or I would say any kind of relationship. It is to do the relationship well, it's really about love. And it may not be the um, romantic kind of love. However, it's all about self-love because everyone else is simply another version um, of, of um, the oneness within. So when you start to accept and love yourself and to live like you already have um, you're not looking for love from someone else, that you already provide yourself with that love and you already have that love within your own life and you already um, live as though you have all the love that you need. And when you can live like that and really um, practice that and, and, and really live from that and it's actually much in terms of vi vibrationally you are actually at the the best possible um, vibration to attract in the right person who also can vibe with you at that level of self-love and when two person who truly love themselves and understand what it takes to um to nurture themselves and also be able to nurture other people as well and have that compassion for other people as well, then a, a partnership from that kind of um, a love relationship is going to be much stronger. And Adam, um, I would say, I wouldn't say that there will be no drama at all. However, it, whatever the, the drama is, because you, both of you, both person in, within the partnership is, um, they know how to be themselves. They know how to be vulnerable, to ask for what they need in order to nurture themselves. Then it is the best way to move through relationship and be able to move, I would say, uh, let me rephrase, is to move through the romantic relationship and be able to be a, an intimate partnering and still be able to give each other room to grow and be okay when, because sometimes it does happen that you do outgrow other people. However, if both of you come from um, balance, then when a relationship comes to a, <clears throat> and I would say an organic end, it is not, um, <clears throat> it is not the end of the world. You won't come, you won't really drop to rock bottom. It's because you already um, have that love for yourself. It is just that you are going, you, the, the, the person that, is, that you've been sharing a, a journey with now is, has, has to go away and um, be on a different journey. So it's not the ups and the, 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 the lows is not going to be as dramatic as when you put all your your eggs in the in someone else basket so that really for me is what um 
romantic relationship in fifth dimension can be it can be this beautiful partnering of someone who is in uh, who is in all um, possession of their own um, they they are balanced as well as you are balanced and when two strong people come together, they can create a romantic relationship that is much more robust as someone who, um, uh, or, uh, or as opposed to two person who, or two people coming together who are not, who, who are not, um, who don't have the full decks to play with. They, they somehow, they already, um, they're not, they haven't quite healed that woundedness in themselves and they need or they on some level needed that someone else to complete themselves so it's it's more of um, a drama in order to to try to find the 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 be one so when a romantic relationship is simply something that is the icing on the cake rather than the whole cake, then it's going to be, um, the potential is endless. So this is all I have to say about romantic relationships. Um,